Well, I'm delighted today to be speaking to Jeff Cook, who's the chair of Quilt Achiever International here in Jersey. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you very much, David. Nice, nice to be with you. So thanks for taking the time to speak today. We're going to talk in a moment about the 50th anniversary of Quilt Achieve It, about some global trends. But first of all, Quilt Achieve It International Limited, it's a, a restructure of the company that you've done here in Jersey. Yes. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about that and yeah, the logic for clients as well. Surely. Um, well, as you know, Quilter is, uh, is a UK heritage company, mm. uh, 250 years old. Uh, but it's not such a well-known uh, uh, feature that it's been in Jersey for 50 years mm. and has clients all over the world. And as the groups looked at uh, expansion and growth opportunities, uh, we're taking the opportunity to create an international division effectively, mm. uh, which goes beyond Jersey uh, and aspires to uh, a more global um, uh, sort of business. Mm. Uh, and of course, we now have something of an international division formed with Jersey, Dubai, where we have a full time office, been open a few years now, and also more recently with the Quilt Achieve It Europe office in Dublin. Mm. So that gives us much more coverage and scope that's dedicated to uh, international clients. Uh, and we're seeking to maximize that opportunity. Mm. So that's adding to the offering or seeking to reach new clients with something broader? Uh, both really. Yeah. So, uh, so in terms of geographies, uh, Dubai was uh, putting a, a base on the ground, uh, you know, boots on the ground in, in the GCC, uh, and that's led to business expansion. That's been mm. successful. Uh, and we'd like to kind of build on that. Um, QCE, if I may call it, QC, mm. Quilt Achieve at Europe, was it in a way a response to Brexit? Mm, uh, so yeah. uh, European clients, of course, uh, you have your marketing restrictions yeah. if you're not within the EU. And of course, Dublin is. Yeah, so uh, like a British expat in Spain. Correct. Can, yeah. yeah, correct. So you know, I think something like five and a half yeah. million British expats around Absolutely. the world. Uh, significant number in Europe. So it brings that capability. But with the offices working together, mm. uh, they can flow the client to the best proposition, the best booking point that really matches and meets their circumstances. Mm. So the 50th anniversary approaching does give you a chance to reflect back how the market's developed. I mean, and how as a jurisdiction, times and business has yes, changed. Yes. I mean, what would you see as, as some of the milestones? How would you characterize the yes. business that's here today and how it's yeah, evolved? Yeah, sure, sure. Well, it's interesting because Quilt Achieve It uh, in Jersey has a very similar timeline to the modern finance industry. Mm. That's just over 60 years old, Quilt Achieve It's 50. So it's been here pretty much from the off. Uh, and if you went back a number of decades, it was very much a uh, individual, private client uh, type of proposition. Uh, you know, it started in the 60s with a few banks uh, when, when they internationalized and could kind of charge interest or offer interest, mm. sorry. Um, and then expanded into private wealth and trusts. Uh, and the investment business, of course, provides services into those client bases, mm. uh, uh, particularly where the client's looking for an independent um, uh, investment manager. So it's grown with it. I would say what's changed the most for the jurisdiction, and, uh, and it's required this business to be agile and to adapt, mm. is the move from uh, a retail market to a predominantly institutional and high net worth market. Mm. So we really moved the value chain. Mm. So Jersey now is actually more than half of its business is institutional. Mm. Uh, and uh, we've taken advantage of that by working with uh, trust companies uh, and uh, other advisors to continue to offer in our services, principally the trust industry, but now also to the, to the ultra high net worth and high net mm. worth client too. And the institution, on the institutional side, I mean, the pension fund market is an interesting Correct. one, linked yeah. into markets like Dubai. Yes. And, you know, that, how do you see the opportunity yes. in that It's in that significant. Niche? I think yeah. it's significant because um, many countries around the world, particularly ones that are evolving, uh, modernizing, uh, are looking to bring in those kinds of arrangements to make sure, you know, with aging populations, they don't have a dependency in their population that isn't provided for, and they don't want everybody to fall back on the state. Hmm. So private provisions become more widespread. Uh, there's more, a lot more interest in it. Uh, and you know, even in Jersey, which is quite a mature jurisdiction, uh, uh, we haven't until uh, recent times had a dedicated pension regulator. It's in the process of being set up at the moment. Hmm. Uh, and I think you know, everywhere in, uh, in the world, people are looking at how they deal with demographics, uh, uh, and then from the individual point of view, if you're working, of course, you want to capture value whilst you've got your 
overseas uh, kind of uplifting your earnings yeah. and make sure at the end of all of that, you've actually got something put behind you. Yeah, if you're earning in a jurisdiction, not paying much tax, yes. you've got to provide for yeah. that moment when you want to take your foot off the pedal, haven't you? That's it, you want to maximise that, don't you? So you can enjoy the lifestyle you plan for uh, when the time is right. Mm. And also in that time, the what clients want from their investment managers obviously evolved a huge amount. I mean, responsible investing is a huge yes. theme and trend now. I mean, what do you yes. see in terms of trends in the investment world yes. that have changed over that over yes. that long yes. stretch? Uh, well, that, that's definitely a big one, mm. uh, and I think it's still gaining momentum. Mm. Uh, you know, despite the, the sort of uh, turmoil we've seen in markets in twenty twenty two, you know, the, uh, and sort of moves by some. You know, see it in the United States a little bit of a. a, a a headwind now for for that philosophy from some states, but not not across the board. Um, I, I think it's an embedded trend. It's very powerful. It's, mm. it's set, um, and and as you meet uh, newer generations of investors, I would say they're more concerned about it than was the case historically. Uh, I would say quarter two were very early on to that. They've had a climate assets fund for more than a decade. Mm. Uh, they've got one of the largest research teams of any a discretionary fund manager in the UK. Uh, and of course, we get access to that here in Jersey mm. and abroad. And because to do it well, you have to be part of a bigger. Entity, you do. Don't you do. You? <laughs> you do. It's it's all about research. It's all about market intelligence. Mm. It's all about benchmarking and measuring, uh, and having you know a, a line of sight to know that if people are claiming certain things about the ethical nature of their fund or uh, of their uh, stock, sorry, or um, uh, of their uh, sustainability credentials. That has actually something behind it. Yeah, the and due of course, diligence has been done. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and of course you've got screening now, haven't you? Yeah. Where uh, you know, some some uh, investors don't want carbon, you know, in yeah. their portfolios. And uh, there was a time when uh, armaments were very de rigueur, but uh, I guess yeah. people are the conundrum now. Well, do we need an armaments industry given what's yeah. developing in the world? So, and are the trustees locally now asking you more often for these type of mandates, or that still developing? I mean, I hear different things from. No, they from are. The, from I would say industry. they are, in by and large. Yeah, and I think it's because their clients are asking them for it. Yeah, I think they're pushing them to say, you know, to set some parameters of of what style of investment they want to go into, and and the things that are important to them outside of pure return. Mm. And you mentioned before. Broadening out the offering from the office here. I yes. Mean, what is that to give a more holistic relationship into the client, not just to look at the management of the portfolio, but other things that are yes. concern, financial concerns of theirs yes. that can be delivered yes. by you? We, we have different types of, of, of clientele in different geographies. So if you took the three crown dependencies, about a quarter mm. of a million people, uh, and yes, they, they benefit from our classic uh, bespoke discretionary investment activity. Uh, but they need other things as well that we're not currently fulfilling, mm. where I think if we provided a more holistic service, we could manage and provide for their wealth management needs mm. uh, and combine financial planning, financial advice with um, investment advice. That's not to go into competition with our introducers. Mm. Uh, you know, it, 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 we always respect um, existing relationships uh, and there's never any, uh, any question of cross-marketing or anything like that. But there are some private clients who don't want to uh, uh, deal exclusively through, uh, you know, a particular channel, and would like to deal with us direct. They, yeah. They kind of ask us and say, you know, well, you've done that investment work for me. Could you sort my pension out, or um, how do you think this works in terms of, you know, my wider needs, or I want to make sure this sort of value is protected for my. Successors. Yeah, looking at their goals and ambitions. Yes, isn't it more yes. holistically than just. Yes. The st- portfolio in isolation. And I think that yeah. plays into the themes on responsible investing. If you're yeah. looking on these longer time horizons, the yes. question naturally arises yeah. for broader plans, doesn't That's it? That's right. That's right. Yeah. But it's been, as you touched on, challenging times in markets over the last 18 months. Yes. We were just speaking with Tim Child talking about how the, the relationship is central here at Quantachivia. Mm. You know, how do you how have you seen the business provide reassurance and support to clients who are yes, navigating yes, these markets? Yes. Well, I, I think the longevity does that. I mean, it's not, mm. that, we, not that we're complacent about that, but uh, many of the uh, investment managers here have been here for uh, a decade or two. You know, they're yeah. very experienced. They've got long established relationships with their clients. Have um, seen problems before as well. Yes, not, you know, yeah, seen yeah. different markets yeah. and challenges. And uh, uh, so... So I think when when things are turbulent or a little bit less level, 
then the clients generally are just seeking reassurance. Mm. Um, communication. And, uh, it, is, yeah. it is all about communication. It's all about explaining what's going on in the market uh, and uh, providing the necessary reassurance. Uh, and, and when you get you know, the opportunity to talk to clients about new investment, uh, shaping that to reflect market circumstances and to deliver the kind of outcomes they're looking for. Mm. Um, uh, and I think just those old uh, established um, principles that you know great value. Uh, uh, you know, it's 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 very. Uh, there's a great risk of becoming seeking to become overactive in your management when when things aren't going as you might like. You know, when markets mm. are suffering some disruption, there's always a temptation to think, oh well, shall I shall I come out? Which is usually the worst possible thing you can do. Um, and this is one of the challenges with yeah. technology and information. It is. It? It is. If it's you know you're yes. getting pinged a stock yes. price, yes. you know it can it, yes. it can be distracting, isn't it? It can. It, for it can be clients. a great distraction. Yes, yeah. and you're getting so much fed through your TV screen and yeah. through social media um, that people absorb a lot of this. And of course, you know the media quite naturally will have quite impactful headlines, mm. um, whatever the particular situation is. So. So it's it's really about that um, all those hard yards are putting around investor education, and that if somebody is investing for a five to ten year horizon or beyond, perhaps beyond if it's their pension, then uh, you know whilst these things are um, unsettling, they're not a sufficient or a good reason to start adjusting your arrangements because um, we know statistically, don't we, over hundreds of years, that these things do get smoothed out eventually. Um, mm. And it's important to kind of keep calm and be measured uh, mm. uh, about things. Easy to say, not so easy to do when you've got all this as a wave of media coming at you. But but it's critical because by and large, uh, you know, if people stay for the long term and and keep their heads, they it generally will come right and they make mm. good returns. Mm. Um, trying to time markets is extraordinarily difficult, mm. and there's a huge amount of luck involved in it. Mm. You know, you're, you're pretty lucky if you get it right. Mm. Um, so that consistent message about, um, you know, we, we reminding people about why they made the investment, mm. their time horizons, when they're likely to actually need some capital back, because if they don't need it back, the best thing to do almost in, invariably is to ride things out. And the, the 50th anniversary gives you a chance to pause and reflect how much things have changed. But as you look into the future, you know, what are you excited about in the business? What's coming up that you think you're really most focused on, on trying to develop here? Right. Well, I, I think trying to broaden our service offering. So, mm. uh, so I think moving, adding wealth management to our, our core discretionary investment um, offer is is quite an exciting opportunity, because I think uh, we're a trusted brand, mm. uh, and people would value having that extra capacity, extra capability. Uh, diversifying our offering, we've already because uh, trying to tailor tailor products and services to some of the new markets we're in. So we have a Sharia offering now for mm. uh, the Middle East, which I think is tailored to market demand. Um, so it's those kinds of things, that sort of diversification. And then I think also fusing the traditional attraction, which is the person-to-person -person relationship, the trust that's built on that with technological delivery, with digital delivery. So um, the firm as a whole has plans to keep developing its platforms, keep developing its digital delivery and capability. Uh, and to fuse those strengths, I think, is, is quite exciting, really, and make us even stronger and give better service to clients, more immediate service. And what do you see, zooming out, what do you see from a Jersey perspective on the world stage? You know, how do you, what do you see the island doing really well and, and striving and going out into the world to do? It's, it's, a, it's a stable place. And, you know, stable can sound sort of fuddy and old fashioned, but it's very much in fashion at the moment. Mm. You know, when you get these uh, big dislocations in the world, geopolitical markets, uh, you know, inflation, zooming interest rates going through the roof, these sorts of things, it does make people uncertain. Uh, and I think they draw comfort from being in a place that has been managing wealth for many, many decades. Uh, they know their wealth is safe here, it's protected, mm -hmm. it's well managed. And I think that gives them reassurance. Building on that in terms of our future, mm. there's an enormous amount of opportunity out there. Mm. Um, you know, global wealth has grown enormously. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, there is a strong demand for what we do. So provided we, we continue to be well regulated, mm. compliant, um, offering tailored services that clients appreciate and need, um, then there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, so uh, already uh, through, through Europe, through the Channel Islands, through the reach the Channel Islands has to many mm. markets, the Middle East and to South Africa. And in time, we would have aspirations to develop business in Asia. 
So, uh, so I think there's a lot of opportunity before us. Uh, I think we're well placed to capture that both as a firm and as a jurisdiction. Fantastic. Well, look, Jeff, thank you for taking the time to speak to me. I look forward to sharing this interview. My pleasure. Thank you.